Good morning, everybody. It is week 28 Thursday's morning work. Mr. straighten out here. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, everybody, here we are on week 28 Thursday, and we are continuing with the weird-looking typos that, you know what, if you just skip, fine. All I really need you to understand is that in order to find the interquartile range, IQR is interquartile range. So within the three quartiles, which are pieces of your data that go from a specific point after the minimum before the maximum, when you divide it up into a box, you'll see this in another video on box plots, it's quartile three minus quartile one. So if we could read this, and this was five, and it was quartile one, and this was 10, and it was quartile two, and this was 15, it was quartile three, I'm just using my imagination here. Then I would do quartile 3 minus quartile 1, 15 minus 5, and get 10. On number 2, if I use my imagination, I could say that this was 15, this was 20, this was 25. So if this would be quartile 1, this would be quartile 3, and I do 25 minus 15, and I get 10, again, as my interquartile range. Since we don't know what the real numbers are, I could just play with that to show, hey, I know interquartile range is quartile 3 minus quartile 1. Number 3... Um, so I'm going to try and explain, this is, this is really all I did, and then I'll show you another way. But um, in the question, we know that 75% is not the total, right? The total would be 100%, and we know that 48 pieces is not the total, because they've only eaten a piece of, a certain chunk of the candy, pieces of candy, and they've eaten 48, so there's more than 48. When I know that I am going up, what 48 needs to get bigger. I'm looking for the total. I have a part, I'm looking for the total. I have a part, I'm looking for the total. Since this is a fraction, this is a, a decimal, I can divide this number by that because when you divide by decimals, you get bigger. I'll say that again. When you divide by decimals or fractions, you get bigger. When you multiply by decimals or fractions, you get smaller. So I've just learned that if I have the total, I multiply it by the decimal, and I'll get the smaller piece that I'm looking for. But if I have the smaller piece, since 48 is less than the total, I can divide by the percentage as the decimal, and I get where I started. So here is what I did. I set up 48 divided by 0.75, which is the decimal form of 75%. And then I have to move the decimal over twice because, or multiply it by 100, because I don't like dividing my decimals. And I will move the decimal over twice here, which fills two gaps. So I put two zeros there. And when I do 4,800 divided by 75, which will give me the same answer because both numbers were multiplied by 100, I get 64. And 64 is how many total pieces there would be. So I can work one problem and find the total. Or if I have the total, I can work one problem and find the piece. Now, to prove it, Here's the tape diagram method. 75% is 3 fourths. So if I just divide my 48 by 3, I find that each piece is 16. And then if I do 16 times 4, I get 64 my total. You can do however way you want, but um, I don't know if that makes sense. When you know you're looking for the total, so you have to get bigger, you can divide by the decimal. 48 divided by 0.75. Okay, let's move to number 4. All right, so the range is maximum minus the minimum. It's the distance of my data from the beginning to the end, and so you can just take the biggest number minus the smallest number. 83 minus 21 gives us 62. The mode is the most common, the most repeated, the most popular. So I notice that there are two numbers, 39 and 21, that are repeated more than once. They're both repeated twice. And then all the other numbers are just there one time. So 21 and 39 are my mode. They're my most common numbers. And to find the mean, we have to, mean is average, and so we've got to get these all into a lump sum and then divide it equally amongst all of them. So we're going to add up all the numbers, then divide by how many numbers there are, which is 5. So when you add them all up, I got 410, and then I did 410 divided by 5, and I got 82. And here's what I said for the star. So area of a parallelogram is identifying the base and the height. And the height should be 90 degrees from the base, top and bottom right there. Then you multiply base and height, and you write that number 
as units squared. Now, if this was five inches and this was six inches, if I was measuring in inches, this would be inches squared because inches would be my units. Units are the words or the measuring tool or measuring system you're using. So inches, feet, yards, me miles, meters, kilometers, any of those um, different types of distances would be my units. And then I square it because I'm literally doing that unit times that unit. Um, and so I can write square, S-Q-U-A-R, or I can just do number two. So there you go. If you have any questions, message me on Schoology. Leave a comment. Talk to you later.